Sponsored by MaximumMods.com Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in to my third video of the Cosmos 2 build log series. In this video we'll be installing the rest of the components in the case as well as adding the radiators and lastly we'll be adding the tubing to the uh, the build to water cool. So first we'll start off by going over the fans that we'll be using on our radiators. These are the Cooler Master Sickle Flow 120s. I've kind of mentioned them already. And what we'll be doing is we have some um, Roswell uh, fan extensions just in case you know for the radiator if you, your cables aren't long enough you use those. Those work great. Um, these are nice fans. Um, these fans are actually uh, fans that my friend picked out so I had really no say in it. Um, they'll do just fine and uh, they'll work great with a radiator anyway and they look nice except that little sticker in the middle I don't know what what's going on there but anyway so here we have the fans mounted at the top now I will say it was a little bit more difficult than it usually should be to just mount the fans usually those screw holes to just line up but I had some issues with uh, the holes lining up properly so I had actually had to dremel out some of the holes to make them bigger so I could fit the screws through now another little issue that I ran into was actually mounting my 360 millimeter radiator at the top As you can see here it's mounted in and it looks just perfect but in the front, by the where the nozzles, where the in and out are, in the front, uh, there's a little tab that sticks down where the fan screws for, are for. And you can, I don't know if you can see it. It's up in there. And what I had to do was dremel that down so I could fit the radiator. Not a huge deal, but again, a little setback that probably shouldn't have happened. So to unlatch the dry bay covers in the front, it's very simple. Just put your finger in and pull up on the latch, and it should pop right out. We are ready now to install our uh, fan controller as well as our DVD drive. So the fan controller he went with is the NZXT Sentry LX. It's a big fan controller, but it's very nice. It has all your sensor probes, it has all your RPM ratings, your date and time, all this good stuff on a nice big LCD screen, which makes it very easy to read, and it's very vibrant. So now we could really progress with the build. We are now ready to install the motherboard inside the chassis. Now, it's um, pretty simple self-explanatory here. Just the same way you um, install any motherboard into the case. Simply put the standoffs in and then lower it inside and then screw it to the standoffs. So here I have the motherboard inside the chassis. Now you can see paper towels coming out of the fittings. Now I do that because I rinse the radiator out with water and I don't want any drips that are left in the radiator to drip onto the motherboard. So it's always a good idea to plug the holes up. So then once we're ready to actually install the tubing on the fittings, we'll go ahead and take out the paper towels. So here we have both of the Heat Killer GTX 670 full knee nickel plated blocks on our GTX 670s. These are extremely nice box um, very simple to put on it comes with all the included hardware to do so um, it even has the directions to do it so I'm not going to go ahead and spend too much time in how to install these um, but I just like to give you guys a good look now what we'll have to do is actually link these together somehow and some people use tubing to link in between the two graphics cards but you can also get these link um, that are actually just solid pieces that you could actually just put in between the two blocks it makes it very easy and you don't have to you know get in there with your fingers and try to install a tubing in a little, very small amount of space it's very good especially if there's only a single slot for you to do so um, in this case we have two slots in between the two cards so we have a dual slot connector so this is a dual slot connector that I was talking about now this is going to allow us to connect the two graphics cards without having any tubing in between now to do this what you want to do is screw the uh, connector onto one of the cards and then screw the other one onto it after. You don't want to do them at the same time otherwise you'll be tightening one and then loosening the other which will be pointless. So here we got the two blocks together now what we just want to do is finish tightening any loose um, parts on the f connector itself after you install the two blocks together. So what I went ahead and did and dro is drop the two graphics cards inside the case on the motherboard Now you can see they line up perfectly. Now this may take some time to get to get it right, you may have to um, loosen up the connector a little bit to adjust the spacing if it's not right on the first time. Now it's very important that you install both the screws to um, secure the two graphics card to the chassis because they do weigh a lot. And uh, if you just let the motherboard take all the weight of it, you know you could damage your PCI Express slots, which is not good. So we have some change of plans here uh, for our 240 millimeter radiator. We're actually going to be using the Corsair SP120 high static pressure fans. These are nice fans and they're perfect for radiators. They move a ton of air and they're high static pressure. So here I am just finishing tightening up the screws on the uh, fans to the radiator. You can see it looks very nice. I really like the blue rings around the fans. Gives off a nice clean look. 
So one great thing about the cool launch radiators that I like to mention is there's a little tab underneath the screw hole. So if you screw your screw in too far, um, it'll actually stop and you'll know that you're hitting that tab. So it's not going to puncture your radiator. So that's one thing I love about these cool launch radiators. And uh, it fits perfectly on the 240mm radiator. So no problems with this one whatsoever. Very easy to install. And uh, they look great. So this is going to work really good. So for our pump, we'll be using the newer Coulant's PMP500 pump. Now this pump is very powerful. Um, it's really nice. It already has the pump top um, threaded for G1 4th inch nozzles. So you don't have to buy a pump top, <clears throat> aftermarket pump top for this if you want to install um, compression fittings onto this. It's already pre-tapped with those holes. So that's one thing I really like about this pump. Um, it comes with some extra hardware there for mounting it to the case. So for the outlet on the p uh, pump, we'll be using this 90 degree coolant swivel fitting. Now we have to make it um, out the back of the case and up behind the motherboard. So we can't go with like a uh, straight fitting on top because it won't make the the bend with the tubing. Um, we could use a 90-90 fitting if we wanted to, but I feel that's a little too tight, uh, especially on an outflow of the pump. You don't want a tight um, fitting there that's going to restrict the flow. Although for our intake, we could use a straight fitting because that's going to be coming from the reservoir at the top and then going in there, and that's going to create no problems there whatsoever. Um, it's going to actually be sucking the fluid from the radiator into the pump and then out the top. So we don't need to worry about a 90 there. So next we are ready to install the power supply. Now he's using the Corsair AX1200 watt power supply, very nice power supply. Um, one thing I like to mention is you don't want to connect any of the power cables actually up to the motherboard because when we actually fill the loop, we don't want to have any power going to the motherboard whatsoever. Just in case there's a leak, we don't want the liquid to spill onto the motherboard and short anything out. So we'll go ahead and just put the uh, power supply in uh, and put the cables where we want them to be, but do not connect them anywhere yet. We'll just leave them um, hanging out for now. Although what we can do is do some cable management here. Um, now because of the time crunch and the time that my friend wants his computer, I'm not allowed to really do a whole bunch of cable management on this build. So for now what we'll do is we're tying up a lot of the extra cables. Um, the Cosmos 2 has a lot of front panel uh, connections here that are just, there's a ton for fan connections and whatnot that we're not going to be using. So we're going to go ahead and tie those all together in a big bunch and we'll go ahead and hide those behind the uh, the by drive, uh, the bay drives there, and uh, so we have everything else just kind of laying around for right now. Again, um, we do want to route the tubing behind the tray, so we don't want to make anything too finalized yet because we might have to move stuff if the tube has to go there and the wires are in the way. So we are now ready for the fun part, We're ready to start putting tubing in our system. Now for the tubing we'll be using the Duralene half inch inner diameter by 3 4 inch outer diameter tubing. This is one of the biggest tubing that you could get for your system. Now it does make it a little harder to work with, so you got to keep in mind um, if you want to make any really tight bends and you don't want to use 90 degree fittings, then you may want to go with a smaller diameter tubing. It doesn't really matter um, what tubing you're, you get uh, for the system, it's not going to affect really uh, the temperatures. Maybe a a degree or two difference Celsius in the temps, but um, we should have no issues whatsoever. Uh, for the tool we'll be using to cut this with is a tube cutter. Now you can pick this up at Home Depot. Um, kind of expensive, about 20 bucks, but it makes t cutting the tubing just so much easier. It makes a really nice clean cut, and uh, you don't have to worry about any jagged edges. So here I went ahead and connected the first tubing to the setup. <clears throat> we have the, it coming from the 360 millimeter radiator at the top out and into the CPU block. Now one thing I like to mention about why cutting the tubing straight is so important is because if it's not straight it's not going to sit flush on the fitting and it's going to create an uneven um, part in the fitting and that's very bad you know if there's any liquid that gets behind there you could easily leak out the part that's not seated correctly so you really want to make sure you cut a nice clean cut when you're cutting the tubing. So at this step, I really want to figure out how I'm going to mount the 240mm at the bottom and with the pump configuration. So this is what I've come up with so far. Um, we have the outlet connecting right into the inlet of the 240, and so we'll have the outlet of the 240 going back behind the motherboard tray. Um, and we'll have the inlet there, it'll be coming from the reservoir at the top. So this seems to be the best way for me so far. Um, 
you know we don't have to use a lot of 90 degree fittings whatsoever and it looks very good and it's we'll be able to place the radiator down at that bottom compartment and it'll fit in there just perfectly so that's one of the things that we do want to keep in mind is um, you don't want to do a punk configuration where there's going to be a lot of 90 degree fittings and you know there's not going to be enough room to actually set it in there because we do want to put the fans um, we do want to make sure the fan clears the uh, side panel door so here we have the tubing complete. I went ahead and did the whole thing because I kind of got carried away. And for, um, but we'll be taking a closer look when we actually fill the system. Um, and we're done for now. We actually got all the tubing up. It looks very nice, very clean. And now one thing I like to mention is you guys probably noticed there's like water spots inside the tubing. And that's because we must flush out the tubing before we actually connect it to all of our components. There's still some you know chemicals that may be left inside the tubing from the manufacturing process. So we really want to make sure we flush out the tubing uh, very well before we actually install it so that's actually just the leftover um, moisture or the, you know the water that's left inside the tubing from when I flushed it um, and that's fine you could leave it just like that just make sure you know if there's no big drips coming out of the tubing you know when you're installing it into your system but that should be it for now I'd like to thank all you guys for watching please comment rate subscribe um, like share favorite really helps me out a lot and uh, in the next video, we'll actually be filling the loop, so that's a really exciting part. And uh, I'd like to uh, thank all you guys again, and please check out MaximumMods.com. It's a new shop we open. We're constantly adding new products to it, so um, stay tuned for that, and uh, I'll see you soon, guys. Thanks.